There once was a busload of poets. Crossing the country, you know it. They whipped out their ditties in all kinds of cities. Sit back. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about my black superhero, baby. When I was a child, I wanted to be a superhero, a, a black, black superhero. My mama used to pin a big old beach towel around my neck. I put on my red cowboy boots, and in an instant, I was black, black. and strong, black, black and intelligent, black. black and beautiful. I was a black superhero, baby. baby. I was the original Lone Ranger before he got with Tonto, and I wouldn't be swinging around your neighborhood like that silly fool in tight Spider-Man. Oh, no. I was more like the, the black, black tarantula. tarantula. I'd even cruise a mean city streets in my black mobile while keeping the fuzz in, in check. check. I even possessed the super black gift of gas. Yeah, reciting Malcolm X speeches to the uninformed. Shit, I was bad. He was bad. I was cool. was cool. I would even shoot soul power out of my black power fist afro pick. And my theme music consisted of songs like I'm Black and I'm Proud by James Brown, Respect by Aretha Franklin, and Chocolate City by Parliament Funkadelic. Look! Talking about my redneck superhero, yeah! baby. When I was a child, I wanted to be a superhero, a redneck superhero. I donned myself in black, exposed my butt crack, and walk with the swagger of Johnny Cash, spew the verbiage of Roscoe P. Coltrane, and possess the dynamic good looks of Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson? I'd cruise the rural back roads of Mesquite, Texas, in my primer down 76 Ford, faded rebel flag hanging from the wire hanger antenna, and seek out the most perverse of degenerates, thieves, muggers, and and people who say they ain't even Christians. I'd paralyze them with the toxic juices I'd spit with the power of my red man shoe. And after a long day's haul, I'd hunker down in my steel reinforced double wide six pack of Coors in my theme song. Good friends, good whiskey, good loving. Yeah, man, I'd be a redneck superhero. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. That's a plane. It's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm just talking about my gay superhero, baby. When I was a kid, I was a superhero, a fashionable one. I would steal my big sister's Wonder Woman underoos, pin her 1970s bug Louis to my back, take her fairy wand in hand, and then what? Bam! I was a gay superhero, baby. baby. Oh, I was so original, redecorating homes in a single bound. Girl, please, Martha Stewart ain't got nothing on this bitch. I was flawless. I, I was fabulous. fabulous. I would shoot queer power like sequins and gold and may out of my blow dryer. Cruising the mall in my new Versace, keeping my boys in check. Hey now. My theme music consisted of Vogue by Madonna, Express Yourself by Madonna, and Like a Virgin by Madonna. Madonna. No longer would the man oppress my people. No longer would that black thing go unnored. Someone to save the day. Someone to take the pain away. Someone to kick your racist ass. For I was. I am. And shall continue to be a black, gay, redneck superhero, superhero baby. There's a rotating crew of 100 poets from around the country on the bus. But we've been on tour. This is just our third gig. We started in Seattle two days ago, Portland last night, Chico tonight, tomorrow is Oakland, the next day San Francisco, and then 38 days later, we end up in Providence, Rhode Island at the National Poetry Slam. This is a, 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 you know, a historical event in American letters, you know, a, a bunch of poets riding around America on a bus. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sweating for you tonight, and it's not for the oldies, it's for the poetry. Give it up! Give it up, Chris! Yep, coming to Tempe, Arizona. Oklahoma City, baby. And right here is the grassy knoll. Grassy knoll! And I've had sex there. You have! Uh -huh. Can I shake your hands? <laughs> so what's up, Austin? How you doing? America is situated nicely between New Orleans, Louisiana, and uh, where are we going tomorrow? the country, picking up poets, dropping them off. I'm disappointed. There's only one person been in jail so far. It's, it's wonderful to be here in Worcester. <laughs>
without any further ado, are you ready to hear some slam balls? Welcome to Slam America! Listen, his father made a habit out of hitting him. See, some men drink, some men yell, some men hit their children. This man did it all because I guess all men want their boys to be geniuses. Beethoven. Little boy living in a house where a name meant nothing. Living in a house where mercy had to be earned through each perfect note tumbling up through the roof to tickle the toes of angels whose harps couldn't hold half the passion that was held in the hands of a young boy who was hard of hearing. Beethoven, who heard his father's anthem every time he put finger to ivory, it was not good enough. So he played slowly, not good enough. So he played softly, not good enough. So he played strongly, not good enough. And when he could play no more, when his fingers cramped up into the gnarled roots of tree trunks, it was not good enough. Beethoven, a musician without his most precious tool, his eardrums could no longer pound out rhythms for the symphonies playing in his mind. He couldn't hear the audiences clapping, couldn't hear the people loving him, couldn't hear the women in the front row whispering, Beethoven as they let the music invade their nervous system like an armada marching through, firing cannonballs, detonating every molecule in their body into explosions of heavenly sensation. Each note leaving track marks over every inch of their body, making them ache for one more hit. He was an addiction. And kings, queens, it didn't matter. The man got down on his knees for no one but amputated the legs of his piano so he could feel the vibrations through the floor. The man got down on his knees for music. And when the orchestra played his symphonies, it was the echoes of his father's anthem repeating itself like a book, book and record, book, book and record, book, book and, rec book, book and record. It was not good enough. So they played slowly, not good enough. So they played softly, not good enough. So they played strongly, not good enough. So they tried to mock the man, make fun of the madness by mimicking the movements, holding their bows a quarter of an inch above the strings, not making a sound. It was perfect. See, the deaf have an intimacy with silence. It's there in their dreams. And the musicians turn to one another, not knowing what to make of the man, trying to calculate the distance between madness and genius, realizing that Beethoven's musical measurements could take you to distances reaching past the Towers of Babylon, turning solar systems into symbols that crashed together, causing comets to collide, creating crescendos that were so loud they shook the constellations until the stars began to fall from the sky. And it looked like the entire universe had begun to cry, distance must be an illusion. The man must be a genius. Beethoven, his thoughts moving at the speed of sound, transforming emotion into music. And for a moment, it was like joy it was a tangible thing, like you could touch it. Like for the first time we could watch love and hate dance together in a waltz of such precision and beauty that we finally understood. The history wasn't important. To know the man, all we ever had to do was listen. From the fastest growing news station in Northern California, you are watching Today About the Bay. What is it like to be a news reporter? It's cool. Very cool. I mean, I'm the morning feature guy. This is actually our second week doing it, so we're just launching new shows. Pay so. hey sucks, but at least it's somewhat stable. stable. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's cool. So are you guys making a documentary? Yeah, we are. So you started <laughs> Why are you asking me so many questions, man? Why don't you just leave I me alone? Turn the camera. I'm with Bob Riddell for a quick preview. And don't say ass. Can I say punk ass? No. Yeah, you can say punk ass. Okay. <laughs> What do you expect this morning? Yeah, and he's I not realized in I wasn't alone. Oh. And I looked around and I saw other wussy boys That's living large and proud of who they here. were. Anthony Michael Hall, wussy boy. Michael J. Fox, wussy boy. And I'm Lord God King of the wussy boy here. movement. I have a Matthew friend here, Gary. Gary. What is, Unafraid what is this? Unafraid to the world, insensitive yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's kick much Now, I'm no longer tour. afraid of my And what, what exactly is the Slam America tour? It's a 30 city tour across America. And um, poets on the bus, 100 poets on the bus, crossing the country, the freshest, hottest poetry. <laughs> and one of our sponsors huh? just flew over. What? Huh? Huh? <laughs> so you guys are what we call extreme poets. That's right. We're into uh, gesticulation and extremeness. Ge what is it? Gesticulation. Gesticulation. And these are... These Extreme are the poets. poets. Wow. You guys are wives. Yeah. And he's going to be 
been portrayed as monkey. <laughs> well, basically, guys, these guys are on tour. They got their own tour bus, and when you see it, you kind of think of a rock and roll band. And I guess these guys are what you'd call extreme poets. They're kind of like a rock and roll version of poetry. Ben Porter Lewis is going to do a little freestyle. Basically, I just got to give you a word, and you're going to go nuts. My word is concrete. We're breaking it live in San Jose, real time. On the concrete, the street beats. We got the concrete hack. We got spoken word poetry coming through with the plan. Poetry on channel zero. You better slam. We coming correct for you across the nation. The brothers' gesticulations, oracular verbal assault Love on it. your mama. Assault on your mama. <laughs> Channel Zero. Zero. Channel 11. I appreciated that. Oh, your mama. Woo! Hit me with one of those cat calls. See, I was walking down the street like your sister, like your mama, walking down your street like your daughter, like your grandma, writing that symphony in my mind. I could see the violinist about to touch the bow to the strings when, damn, baby, milk it did your body good. I'm walking down your street like your sister, like your mama, walking down your street like your daughter, like your grandma, but you don't want to hear that because you're only looking for a lover, so all you see are curves. Hit me with one of those cat calls. When I'm walking down the street writing that poem in my mind, I had written the outline and was about to start the rhyme when, hey, mommy, where are you headed? And you saved me from the prison of my mind. Oh, call me mommy again, please. Hit me with one of those cat calls just one more time so that I can feel my womanly worth. I'll call you Bobby because every woman really wants a daddy. And you're the first man to ever be completely honest about what women really need. And I need another cat call because I sometimes lose awareness of my curves. And you remind me I should never worry my little head about the problems of this man's world because there are big, strong machos like you who value your sister's beauty. You just have to celebrate with the arch la rosita. When I'm walking down the street like your sister, like your mama, walking down your street like your daughter, like your grandma, feeling kind of scared, you know, walking down that street in that neighborhood in these times, and just as paranoia is kicking my ass, whoa, beautiful, I'm in heaven. <laughs> you made me feel so at home and even a little turned on to boot. Hey, where are you going in such a big hurry? Come back and give me another cat call, because nobody can How like you, baby. Gets me all hot just to think what else you can do with that tongue wagging back and forth. <laughs> And you always remind me it doesn't matter what I wear because I can be a complete mess and hog hog, you fine. <laughs> what was I thinking? Actually worrying about things that don't concern me like education and respect when all I really need more than flowers, more than candy, more than respect is a hunk of hunk of man in a hunk of hunk of car and those drive-by love notes that convince me that I think I'm in love too. Hit me with one of those cat calls See, so you finally hit on the one thing that drives me wild. I just hope your daughter gets to meet such giving men as you. Are you lonely? Have you always wanted to ride around the country in a bus with a bunch of smelly poets? Do you have lots of free time and no commitments to the world or society in general? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then boy, do I have a once in a lifetime offer for you. But wait, there's more. I'd like to extend an invitation for you to join the Slam America Tour. You'll share a motel bed with three of your closest poet friends, but most nights will actually sleep on the bus. Won't you run away and join the poetry carnival? When I first thought of the poetry bus idea, everyone said, you have to be joking. No one will give us money to drive drive around the U.S. reading poems, but look at the love. The tour was a blur. I remember highlights, but not where they happened. Was it Worcester or Austin where we had the incident? Remembering the tour is like catching a dream. It keeps slipping away. Often we were lost. Most people fell asleep on the bus, only to wake up to read their poems. So here we are, in the thick of it, poems popping in and out. Where we are, only the driver knows, and he speaks in haiku. Where you 
you fly to, little butterfly? Where are you flying to? Is there some big butterfly ball to go to? A lovely party in the sky, butterfly. Did you bring a dish to share? Did you? Hmm? Some cream of mushroom soup, green beans, pearl onions, and bagel bits to share. That Pyrex dish is mighty heavy. How'd you get that up there? Oh, you're flying pretty. Flying pretty high. You need a couple of drinks? A couple of drinks to get you by? Fly! Buy a fly! You're worried sick. Worried about your crazy drinking butterfly ways. Oh, you've seen better days, butterfly. You've seen better days. Do you remember those days on the road with the Doobie Brothers? Do you, motherfucker? Set up mic stands for the boys and getting high. I mean, really. Jesus is just all right by you. Jesus is just all right by fly. Yeah. And those bastard Doobie Brothers. They stranded you in Pittsburgh, man. They made you cry. Butterfly, yes, Shappy. I want to kill you. And the butterfly walked on down the hall, put his boots on. Butterfly, yes, Shappy. I want to. Five one, baby. a.m. We're on the road from Austin to New Orleans. Everyone is asleep, cramped into the bus seats. The swamp is waking up. Or is this a crab bar in Baltimore? Or that naked hot tub no one wanted filmed? Anyway, it's dark and hot and steamy and there's alligators everywhere. I know you're looking for a story, a thread to hold on to, a little foreshadowing, someone to pick up a skull, or a poet to be attacked by a cyclops, a chorus of wet nymphs calling the bus to crash on their curvy rocks. Remember Red Asphalt from Driver's Ed? Now that was a message movie. Drive stupid and die. Alas, we're all about metaphor. When we say voice, we mean life. Listen to the words, the stories, and the rhyme. Meanwhile, back at the poem. <laughs> 